What's up, y'all? It's Jay Midnight, a.k.a. Midnight Hustle. You know what I'm saying? And today I want to talk about the end and the death of mainstream media, dinosaur media. The days of picking our talent, picking the independents and the people that build it up from the bottom, build their own voice or build their own skills, whether it's sports or being an artist or whatever, whatever it is, fashion, and then signing them off to a big com- a big corporation like Disney or ESPN or Universal Music Group, and then exploiting them, and then they can't pass no wealth, real wealth down. And if they do, they're under control, and they got to play a political point, like a they got to toe the line, tiptoe politics and all that, and can't be themselves. That's over. And I want to give a shout out to the front runners in sports and media doing this right now, coming up independent, and that's Cameron and Mace, Cam and Mace. It is what it is podcast because they kill it, and they they make sure to let them know. Like Skip, Skip Bayless, he's like the main one culture vulture, you know what I'm saying? Like his whole show. But let me let Cam do the talking because it's so funny, yo. He Cam be going in on him. Him and Mace is stupid about this. You know that you know how it is, murder man. Listen, he trying nigga 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 trying to start a pot, man. Is is he can't you know is not you got to realize Skip found lightning in the bottle twice with Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp, and the new cast that he has is not matching the energy of the old. Mm-hmm. You know, Stephen A. Smith came in when he when they started years ago. He was loud. Uh, articulate. He knew what he's talking about. He had a little bit of personality. A lot of people forget how Shannon started on Disputed. Yeah. He came in smoking weed, smoking black and mouse, wearing goat goat um, mask on his face for LeBron James, jerseys, drinking Hennessy in the morning. You yeah. know, he was on nigga, nigga, nigga time. Then he with got the nigga. Yeah, with a do rag on. Yeah. It was niggas forget that because he like elevated the way he's yeah. not doing that shit no more. But at the end of the day, Skip was was co- more niggas. More niggas. Nigga. More nigga. Give black me, and mouse. Yeah, black, more nigga. Give me <laughs> more, more nigga. And Give me more nigga. <laughs> for us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's going to be hard for somebody for Skip to try and match Shannon or Stephen A's personality. And I'm not saying that he ain't got people up there that know what they're talking about. But it's a difference between knowing what you're talking about, having personality, and putting those two together. It's not. So you see what I'm saying? Skip Bayless is like a representation uh, or a personification of old mainstream media. So what's happening is he's shuffling, shuffling, shuffling through a bunch of niggas trying to get, trying to get the same thing he had before. But Shannon's gone now and he's independent. He's blowing up. See, that's the talent that, that, um, that, we got and that we're capitalizing on to build for ourselves. Now we control our own narrative. And this is like natural for us. So when we get in conversations in real life about sports and all that, they if they had a camera on people from our environments all the time, like it's live streaming all day. It's, it's over for mainstream media. They can't match what we do. So we got to give a shout out to Cam for that. And let's hear what Mace had to say, because, you know, Mace going to double it up. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference between knowing what you're talking about, having personality, and putting those two together. It's not going to be easy. That's what I was thinking about Paul Pierce. He he He'll, he'll do the black and mouths and all that, the, the drinking. Yeah, Paul will come up with some bitches. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yo, it's, it's, yo. Yes, <laughs> you just got to let him do it. Skip, pause. You got to let him come in there with... Whoever he got fired with. He got fired from ESPN because he had the strippers. No, that was what I was saying. I Bring those same come girls. in with the same group. Yeah, but see the Go thing. Go crazy. I, yeah, I like that. But what, what I'm saying is when Skip do an interview, right, mm-hmm. if you talk to whoever, you think you're like, yo, What's the most nigga shit you think you could bring to the table? (laughs) (laughs) 
Because <laughs> Shane had black and mouse. Yeah. And we yeah, had what you got. <laughs> <laughs> How niggerific can you be? <laughs> you ain't got no moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can we do with this <laughs> I want you, I want you on the show, but what niggerific thing can you do? I wonder how that goes. Yo, you smoke Newport? He's in that Lil Wayne rap. What what do you have? What's your thing? Well, you know, I, I had the strippers that got fired with the strippers. Yeah. You can find them hoes. <laughs> you where them hoes at? <laughs> Bring them in. Let me see the hoes. <laughs> That's how you go viral, Skip. The invoice is coming if you use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tool is our guy, Paul. Yeah. Paul, Paul I, I wish Paul would have came and visited us. I had a conference with us because when Paul was up here, Paul was very entertaining, man. Yeah. He was very entertaining. Yo, Paul, I wish I knew you, you was out there, you know, willing to take a job because... No disrespect. We we got to talk, man. Yeah. We got to talk, man. Definitely. And see, that's the thing. Now, when you got your own platforms and you own your own content, we can take the talent for ourselves and build it the way it's supposed to be built. And then we could, that means you can get the right deals for yourself. You have the negotiating power now. You're not just looking to them for a job. You know what I'm saying? And with the way that content is being consumed now, it's not it's not people watching ESPN at home really like that. People got phones. You know what I'm saying? People got podcasts. People use social media. That's where most of their news is coming from. And that's what I'm going to go to next. I'm going to show y'all how with the numbers and the facts, how it's changing so that the individuals with social media can control narratives now. Meaning. Remember when they were telling you certain lies about injections, you know what I'm saying? Remember that? Yeah. And they told you it was misinformation? Guess what? All of that was true, right? So let's go. Non-establishment, Lyndon Johnson, Democrat, establishment, do it. Less of you, boom. More of you, how wonderful and easy it is to deal with a Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. You're annoying, Kennedys. Let's get rid of these guys. Trump versus take any of these big Republican last names right now. Who is this guy? Dude, you are super difficult to work with. You don't listen to anybody. Let's get these guys. Yeah, yeah. Nikki Haley, what a wonderful, <laughs> fantastic candidate she is. And what districts does she win? What states does she win? You ready? Vermont, Bernie Sanders, the only man wearing a mask in the State of the Union last night. <laughs> NDC. Okay, those are the two places she wins. She's a Democrat. So right there, Patrick Bet David was talking about how because there's establishment media, ABC, Fox, whatever, CNN, MSNBC, they, they're basically picking the candidates for you. They're like, no, we don't like Kennedy, so we're not going to even show him on TV that much. You know what I'm saying? We're going to we're going to elevate Joe Biden, who doesn't even debate. And then we're going to uh, pump Donald Trump on the other side. And that's who y'all got to decide between. And the fact is, now that we have all this access to different platforms and different information from different people, it's a lot of us that don't even, we just like, I ain't even playing the game. You know what I mean? Because we know it's rigged. So that was actually the wrong clip. I wanted to play that after what I'm about to play now. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Rob, do you have the chart that shows, uh, Brandon, I think you have this, that shows how much we consume with OTT, with YouTube, with cable, and how it's been declining over the last 10, 15, 20 years. And Chris, I know you're saying they said 20 years ago, late night news is a thing of a past and all this stuff. Evening that, news, yeah. Evening, that's not what, what I'm saying. No, no. It's how we consume it in what platform. Yeah. Cable TV is a thing of the past. Cable is going away. And, 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 the, and the beautiful thing about capitalism is if I can sit here and watch a podcast right now going on, I can go on YouTube, I can go on Spotify, I can watch Joe, I can watch 
anybody I want here on the podcast, live, comment, do all that stuff. And, you know, the person's talking, and if they're doing a sponsorship with somebody, great. I like it. I don't like it. That gives me the edge. But this is the one, Rob. If you can pull this up, if you can pull this up on what happened with cable and what's been going on with it. This is, uh, 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 if you can pull up this chart, uh, uh, it shows Nielsen the difference between broadcast, streaming, other, and cable. And what companies are increasing, what companies are decreasing. Uh, are you guys able to pull this up? Rob, Let's see if you, everybody say the establishment won't let you pull it up. Shout out. These guys do a great job yeah. here. Come on, Rob. Okay, check this out. If you have it up, there you go. Zoom in a little bit. That's July of 22. The baby blue on the bottom left is 34.4 percent. It's cable. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just a year prior to that. And if you look at streaming, 34.8. Other 9.2. Broadcast 21.6. And you don't see YouTube on the other side because it's dark. YouTube on that chart is 7.3%. Uh, now, if you go to the next chart, go to 20, uh, uh, the other one that you have that goes to 2023, Rob, because you just showed 22. Do you have the 23 or no? You're putting a okay, lot of pressure this. on him, by the way. The 23. Yeah, watch what happened. Cable, just in one year, went from 34.4 to 29.6 mm. in one year. What's five on 34? Five on 34 is 15%. Yeah. In one year, it dropped 15%. If you go back and look at this 10 years, it's a whole different story, but going back to the establishment, non-establishment side, you know, to... So you see what Patrick Bet David is saying there is cable TV news is, is basically dead and it's on its way out. So the people that are in position with independent media and being on the platforms and building their audience now, the trend is gonna come to them because the audiences are gonna come to these people that are the front runners because they're authentic and they're being true to themselves. And that's what people want. Like people don't wanna watch like a news reporter on TV reading the script all day, every day. Like, come on, I wanna know who you are. Is you bought this war, this 2024? for the truth. That's what we want to know. So next, I'm going to go to how these platforms, uh, the establishment that controls media, controls the narrative of people by they can take a thing like the movie Black Panther and make that erase the whole real meaning of Black Panther Party. And then they'll have people so hyped to go see this movie. And when they see it, you see certain people like Wakanda. I'm like, y'all pressed over a fictional place. Like, this is your history. Like, so now when you go on Google or you go on social media, you go on TikTok, because now all the kids get their history and their sources of news and everything from TikTok. Imagine the kid growing up typing Black Panther to them. The only thing a Black Panther was besides an animal is a movie with a fictional superhero. And Kanye West broke this down with Joe Rogan. So that's what we're going to show you next. Black, white, anything. There's a systemic uh, white, white supremacy. Like when I tag, you know, white supremacy or we say this, it's like the um, yes, that is America. That is the world. Currently, we've been taught that my first superhero was Superman, you know, and my dad was a Black Panther. But, you know, when Disney makes Black Panther, now when you look it up, you don't see my dad protecting his neighborhood or snatching a mic out of somebody's hand while they're lying. I don't know, you know, like father, like son right there. Uh, but you see this character that's made for black people to idolize that was designed by a white white person and put out by a white company. So it's controlling the narrative to say, we're going to show you Harry, Harriet Tubman. We're not going to show you Nat Turner. And they do it every chance they get. Maleficent, uh, um, they called her, her race of people the Moors. And the Moors mm. are, are... And I just saw it again. I was just like, yo... If you erase 
our history. Like most black people, we don't know where we come. We think we came from slaves. We don't know our bloodline. And we're, we're given Black History Month and we take that like it's some gift to us. No, it's a programming to us. So they're controlling narratives is what Kanye is telling you and that I'm sure you know. And so I never went to go see Black Panther. Uh, well, I'm never I never really been into like animated superhero type of movies or whatever. But I so I was like, why is what is Wakanda? So this is what so people were so hype about. And I'm like, what? Wakanda, officially known as the Kingdom of Wakanda, is a small isolationist landlocked country located in Africa, surrounded by mountain ranges and a thick jungle. It is one of the most technologically advanced nations on Earth, known for its rich deposits of the element vibranium. Now, look, a kid, because this is who this type of information affects, a kid is going to think the way that's written, even though right here we can clearly see it's, it's the movie, the movie's definition of Wakanda. A kid might just look at this and think, Oh, that's Wakanda. It's a real thing. No, but there is a real Africa that is basically that. You know what I'm saying? So I kept reading. I was like, let's see. How did Wakanda become Black Panther? Black Panther is a title held by T'Challa. I don't even know what that is. A member of the royal family of the fictional African country of Wakanda. After the death of his father, T'Challa claimed the throne and the role of Black Panther. He was exposed to a mystical herb that enhanced his strength and agility to near superhuman levels. Like, bruh, I can't do it. But look, when when the establishment puts out all this entertainment and fiction and all this and says it's based on true things and blah, 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 what they're really doing is programming. So now that we have platforms where we can reach the people directly ourselves, that's what we do. So now y'all are gonna be like, you you're seeing me for the first time. You're like, damn, I never knew like all niggas was impressed over that movie. Like you probably some of y'all probably be thinking like niggas is so hype about this. Cause I see it too. I'll be like, I don't even know what's going on, bro. I don't even watch it. But so that's what I wanted to talk about today. You know what I'm saying? That you and me can exercise our right to speak and when we do that that is empowering the future because we need kids to be able to see different something different than the mainstream narratives because why would you raise your kid in a lie like (laughs) and we need smart people talking you can't just have everybody be a puppet or a celebrity you know what i mean We need people to show the diversity in people. And that's how stuff like racism ends. Because I've been around white people and black people. So I don't really think about it the same way as someone who only grew up with white people or someone who only grew up with black people. It's balance. So, but when you don't have that um, life, you are more prone to be ignorant or have stereotypical thoughts or beliefs because you just haven't been around. And then you figure out from being around or now seeing and hearing through all this, all the content we can create and disseminate that it's a whole, it's different types of people. Everybody's different, but we all are the same in the sense that we want the truth and we want to keep it real. And we're tired of all that left, right politics shit in life. You know what I'm saying? We about building. All right? It's J Midnight, Midnight Hustle. You know what I'm saying? Free game for a lane. Peace out.